So the Gaia archetype can help us to reach uh, a more balanced condition with the natural environment in several different ways. One is to, to recognize that Gaia is the Great Mother, and Gaia is, of course, the, the source of abundance that we all benefit from, that nature is incredibly abundant. And if we, if we relate to her properly, then we will never experience scarcity. Now, what we've done is to set up an economic system that's based on scarcity. And to some extent, this comes from the denial of the Great Mother archetype and the whole tradition of abundance that indigenous cultures are based upon. They recognize this deeply, and they can work within the constraints of their local ecosystems to get continuous abundance. I mean, of course, you have to save, but you don't have to be greedy. I mean, you have to save over, over periods of, of uh, scarcity, which will always occur, but then you diversify and you adapt. And so the whole process of um, recognizing the qualities of the natural world in providing us with, with natural abundance is something that uh, can take us into a much deeper and more fulfilling and meaningful, more meaningful relationship with the natural world because we become embedded in Gaia and this gives our lives really deep meaning and creativity all the time. What are the alternatives to capitalism? Because nearly all our leaders in government and industry Except that the economic system we have at the moment is the only one possible. It's like a law of nature. But that simply isn't the case. There are plenty of examples of different economies that depend upon, you know, using seashells for exchange or have trade and barter, where you simply figure out, you know, how many bushels of oats are, are equivalent to a chicken. Now, people work this out in terms of equivalence. And so the natural thing is for humans to trade, but you need equity and you need stability in your economy. Now we use loans with interest, and that is the toxic element in our economy. And traditionally in Christianity, this is a sin. To lend money with interest is not allowed. And it's also not allowed in Islam, and they still use that injunction. Well, you think, how could we have an economy without interest? An economy without interest would not have this inevitable continuous growth, and it would not have the indebtedness of people to uh, the growth economy and getting trapped in negative e equity and having to repay loans. You know, in order to grow our economies, we encourage people to take out loans. And then they get trapped. And this is a kind of enslavement. Now, we can have an economy that doesn't use that principle. And so it's simply a matter of redesigning it. And, and people like Bernard Leotar and Richard Douthwaite, and there are plenty of other economists, Mar Margaret uh, Kennedy, who will describe it great, in great detail how these economies work how they arise spontaneously in different countries and have done in the past and they're used in in Sweden in Germany they're not the dominant one but they're there and they function perfectly well and they are based on trust and community and looking after each other with this non-growth economy so that we don't have to rape the earth in order to keep the economy going